new Intercontinental Champion. Now he's not getting any standing ovation from me. You two suckers are sitting there in your glory watching him. He doesn't deserve any standing right ovation. The only reason he's up there is Goldust breathed new fresh air into his mouth. He gave him CPR and revived him, and that's why he's up on his feet. Johnson, the new Intercontinental Champion. We're gonna take you back and show you how we did it. All right, set it up, JR. Well, I'll tell you, Ahmed Johnson exploded. Ahmed came with high impact once he got the opportunity. There's a oh. buster. There is no more air left in Goldust. And then Pearl River Plunge. Oh! We have a new Intercontinental Champion on his first try. Ahmed Johnson becomes the man. You know, Ross, the key thing you forgot to mention that was prior to what we just saw on the replay, Ahmed Johnson was lying flat on his back, and Goldust gave CPR to an ejected life Ladies into and him. gentlemen, on his way as the new Intercontinental Champion. Wait just a minute. Brian Pillman recently signing with the World Wrestling Federation. And Mr. Pillman, unfortunately, uh, suffered an, an automobile. Well, wait a minute, they're having a few choice words with some of the fans, but Mr. Pillman having an accident. And during the free for all, Mr. Pillman stated he was going to uh, come down to ringside and uh, Give us a piece of his mind. Now, everyone who's ever seen this extraordinary athlete knows he's a, a little bit different, somewhat of a time bomb. As Jerry, let's take it. Go ahead. All right, Vince, thanks very much. Uh, Brian Pill. How's my extended family doing, Jimmy? Fine. I forgot to tell you, I don't even give a damn about my own family. And I think even less of this sewer of human waste that sits before me. It's easy to see why Jeffrey Dahmer tried to consume this whole state from head to toe. It's not really funny. I'm sure the fans are excited about the day that you will be able to compete in the ring. You think, how do you think you're gonna measure up to this level of competition? Listen, you stupid son of a I'm uh, we apologize. What I'd like to know is, how do you feel being one of the members of the Wretched Refuse, sitting paralyzed with fear while Brian Effin Billman does, says whatever he wants? <laughs> We're going to find out real soon if one of your so-called WWE superstars has the guts to stop me. <laughs> All right. Now take a good look. I'm the brightest star that's ever stepped foot on the face of God's great earth. And a time bomb, if there ever was Will one. Will you crown a king of the ring? I would suggest that. Of a new revolution ascends to his throne. I'm going to rape, pillage, and plunder this entire federation. <laughs> There's no doubt he's a little demented. Uh, yes, you might state that, and uh, Mr. Pillman, I would suggest is going to be ready for action shortly here in the World Wrestling Federation. Is the final match to the King of the Ring. Again, we apologize for some of this uncalled for and untruth remarks. I don't apologize for anything. Of the Ring, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin, ladies and gentlemen, went to the emergency room after his first matchup.
the bald man Mark Miro had some 16 stitches in his mouth and in, I believe his tongue and has returned back here to the king of the ring. I wonder on his way to the emergency room, did he see Jake the Snake Roberts getting whisked away in an ambulance? Well, I'll tell you something, Jake Roberts, his heart is huge. And old. Maybe, maybe, come on, Owen, he's 41. He's and 50 maybe, or 61, quit lying for him. I know what this match means to Jake Roberts. I went to Stone Mountain to interview him. This is so And here he comes. Man. I bet you anything, he doesn't even show up. He 41 years old, determined to come back, determined to be the king of the ring. Both of these men got to get out here tonight. Jake the Snake Roberts, here he comes. I give the old man credit. And he's dragging that snake. He's not carrying it. Can't carry it. Let's show you the damage that was done to Jake the Snake by the man they call Vader in a prior matchup. Here he comes. Look at this. Whoa! Right into the ribs. And of course, we saw the Vader bomb after that. And not what's sending those hard right and left hands into the midsection of Jake the Snake. And there's no telling what kind of damage. And look at here comes Stone Cold. Oh, no. And Stone Cold Steve Austin. Wasting no time going for the ribs of Jake the Snake Roberts. This is the final, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of this matchup will be the 1996 King of the Ring. Austin fighting with 16 stitches in his mouth. Jake the Snake in with gotta have busted or broken ribs. Both men are battered and bruised, but Jake Roberts is obviously in, in a tremendous pain. I don't think Jake should even come out here. Jake's had a severe disadvantage. And Steve Austin has gone exactly for what's injured those ribs. And when you have broken ribs like that, you can't breathe. Your whole body doesn't function right. And when you've got old, brittle, broken up ribs like that as it is, Jake the Snake Roberts, his days are gone. Nonetheless, give Jake the Snake credit for even attempting to come out here. I do give him a little credit. I take my hat off to him. You know, in all this bad news, at least there's some celebrating going on in the locker room area with Ahmed Johnson, and we hope to have highlights of that on Raw on Monday night. I will say this too, Jake the Snake Roberts in my book was an underdog. Oh, I never expected him to get this far, and I'm surprised he's made it into the very finals. And to get a big win, a big upset over Vader, anything is possible. The physical dissection of Jake Roberts is ongoing by Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't know if anybody's ever had broken or cracked ribs, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's one of the most painful injuries you can sustain, especially if you're trying to be in, trying to compete in an athletic contest. You can't breathe. The pain's overwhelming. I'm not so sure that Gorilla Monsoon necessarily made the best decision by allowing Jake the Snake, look at this, now humiliation, allowing Jake the Snake to come back out here and compete in this matchup. Well, we all know Monsoon has been known to make, he's notorious for making stupid decisions. Oh, come on, that's not true. Oh, yes it is, he's done it to me, I can verify that. Oh, Jake's gonna fight with he's every got, breath, every ounce of heart. He's got so something left in him, wait a minute. Don't count him out. Jake the Snake. Even throwing a punch from oh. Jake the Snake Roberts has gotta hurt himself, even when he's throwing the punches, it hurts. Look Wide open. You can imagine every one of those blows. It's like thunder and lightning right into his belly every time he moves. And look at this. Austin, oh, come on, no. Austin ripping off the tape from Jake the Snake and driving the forearm down into the rip area. What kind of competitor is this? What kind of a man is this? Well, Jake Roberts had a choice. He didn't have to come out here. Yeah, he but you don't have to do this. This wait is a minute. the king of the ring. He'll this do anything a... it takes Gorilla to win. Gorilla Monsoon, wait. Gorilla Monsoon is coming. He's going to stop this. Well, this one may be over. This one may be over right here now. I think that's the right thing to do. Call it off. Don't let Jake sustain any serious that's injuries. That's right. Call okay. it off. Stone Cold Steve Austin unrelenting. And if he doesn't stop this thing, I can tell you, Monsoon will disqualify Stone Cold and make King, uh, Jake the Snake the king. Well, why should Stone Cold stop? He hasn't heard a bell ring. He's fair game until the bell rings unless Jake Roberts wants to quit. They ought to get that big ape out of there. He's got no business being in there. Either stop the match, or give it to Stone Cold Steve Austin, or get the hell out of there. Jake doesn't, doesn't want to stop. Jake wants to continue. He's giving Jake the Snake Roberts a chance to get a rest is what he's doing. Jake the Snake! See that? 
Anger of the match, since Ed Rosso. That's a good shot. BS, he gave Jake the Snake Roberts a chance to regain his breath. Here we go, DDT. DDT crack wrench it out. Jake the Snake going for it, 41 years old. Jake sets him out now. Oh. Look at Austin, football's telling the rocks. Oh. All those broken ribs. Jake Roberts a DDT away from realizing his dream. But can he apply the maneuver? Yeah, nice try, Monsoon. I know what you're trying to do. Stone Cold Steve Austin. We stated he was heartless before. I don't think anyone would think he would take that heartless attitude to these measures. Austin with a vile mean streak. It is bona fide, ladies and gentlemen. He is confident. He is focused. He is his own man. Nobody tells Stone. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. It's over. That's it. And the stunner applied again, one, two, and he got him! Stone Cold Steve Austin. Victorious over Jake the Snake Roberts. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Appeared to be bleeding from the mouth again. Went to the hospital. 15 stitches and came back. And it looks like some of those stitches have opened up again. Nonetheless, Jake the Snake Roberts with rib injuries. And in a prior matchup with Vader, Jake came back. Austin is one of the brightest shining stars. This may be only the beginning for that young man, but you gotta hand it to Jake the Snake Roberts, who had a dream. He had a dream he wanted to fulfill here in Milwaukee, and he was one victory short. Let's go back and take a look at the way Stone Cold Steve Austin Defeated on Jake the Snake Roberts. Listen to this. Another look at it. No cold stunner. Very effective. Austin driving his shoulder into the throat of his opponent. Look at the positioning. Boom, right there. And again, give credit to not only that man for winning, he is heartless, but give credit to Jake the Snake Roberts is now the coronation begins. Let's take you up to Doc Hendricks. Doc, go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the fourth prestigious King of the Ring, Stone Cold Steve Austin, an incredible victory. The first thing I want to be done is to get that piece of crap out of my oh, ring. Come on. Because I proved, son, without a shadow of a doubt, you ain't got what it takes anymore. You sit there and you thump your Bible and you say your prayers and it didn't get you anywhere. Talk about your Psalms, talk about John 3.16. Austin 3.16 says I just whipped your ass. He is stone cold. Come on, that's not necessary. All he's got to do is go buy him a cheap bottle of Thunderbird. All right, stop and it. And try to dig back some of that courage he had in his prime. As the king of the ring, I'm serving notice to every one of the WWE superstars. I don't give a damn what they are. They're all on the list, and that's Stone Cold's list, and I'm fixing to start running through all of them. All right, Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's and his remarks, yes, 1996, As far King as this championship match is considered, son, I don't give a damn if it's Davy Boy Smith or Shawn Michaels. Steve Austin's time has come. And when I get the shot, you're looking at the next WWE champion. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Obviously, anything but humble, the fourth prestigious King of the Ring, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, we've stated many times before that anything can happen here in the World Wrestling Federation, but I must say the events that have happened here thus far tonight and the, the toll that it has taken on these athletes is something I don't believe we've ever seen before. And it sort of brings us to the, well, the World Wrestling Federation Championship matchup as Shawn Michaels prepares to defend the World Wrestling Federation title against your brother-in-law, the British Bulldog. Again, a reminder is you have all the way through the evening for you to stay present here and not to physically get involved. Look, I stated earlier, I'm here to commentate and give my expertise. 
I have no business getting involved in any match, and I won't. Okay. As long as nobody bothers me, I won't bother anybody. I'm staying right here, sitting in this seat, and giving my expertise. And a great deal of controversy, of course. Uh -oh, here we go. Here comes Mr. Perfect. Controversy surrounding that man, JR. Will he be an impartial referee or not? Well, I hope that he is. He says he's going to be, and seems to be rather adamant that he is. I do know, from what I understand, is that President Gorilla Monsoon did have a meeting with all the officials earlier today, and I think he laid it on the line with Mr. Perfect, as well as everybody else, to see what you call, call what you see, and above all, be fair. All right, let's take you back now. Mr. Perfect on his way to the squirt circle, and look at this. Just last month, look at the referee who was really knocked through the ropes. However, another referee joined the fray, and Shawn Michaels looked like he was about ready to be power slammed. Look at that. Incredible maneuvering on the part of Michaels. Sets up for the suplex. And look, the second referee is counting, but he's clearly counting Shawn Michaels' shoulders down for the three count. But meanwhile, the other official, the first official, who was knocked down originally, was on the outside, and he clearly counted the British Bulldog shoulders down. And wait a minute, let's highlight it. There you see it. Now watch. All right, we'll pick it up. Watch. The hand coming down. One, two, on the far side of your screen, and a count of three. The most controversial ending of a title match ever. And, of course, that controversy will be cleared up one way or the other here tonight live from Milwaukee. It's the World Wrestling Federation on pay-per-view. It's the king of the ring. And what a cocky attitude, Mr. Perfect. The perfect referee, what do you think? Well, I think he's a man of integrity, and I don't think he's got any reason to do it anything but straight down the middle. Well, All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Accompanied by his wife, Diana. My sister. And Jim Cornette. Here we go, the British Bulldog, confident, as perhaps well he should be, of becoming the next World Wrestling Federation Champion. You know, I have a feeling we're gonna celebrate. I'm really looking forward to this. This is gonna be great. You have to wonder, ladies and gentlemen, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, what's going on with Brett the Hitman Hardwood? Wait a minute, what's that? Yeah! He's the best. We love you, Bulldog. We love you, Diana. Can, we, can you get a hold of yourself, please? Woo! Oh, and Hart. Giving uh, the British Bulldog his own version of a standing ovation. I got a feeling this may not be the most objective commentary from our colleague here. And maybe rightfully so, I don't yes. know. You're the best, Bulldog. And Do it for the family. Distracted by, by a fan or a succession of them. We don't appreciate his tactics as Diana even restrains the Bulldog. The Bulldog is wired for this one, no doubt about it. However, get set, ladies and gentlemen. Get set, and here we go. Look at the crack, if you would. There's a sea of humanity. Here is the Mecca. And the roar of the crowd, absolutely deafening. Here he comes, along with Jose, yeah. Jose Lucario behind the band. John Michaels. The most flamboyant, the most electric, the most resilient.
Wrestling Federation Championship against the British Bulldog as Michaels gives the kick. A bit of an ovation, and wait a minute. Gorilla Monsoon is back in here, back in the ring. What the hell is Monsoon doing? Can he stay away from the camera? Is he a magnet for the camera? God, he's always poking his nose in the business. I think it's pretty cut and dry. British Bulldog versus Shawn Michaels. All right, wait, here comes an Ladies announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. I have been informed by World Wrestling Federation President Gorilla Monsoon the following. As it relates to the assignment of Mr. Perfect as the special referee for this contest, President Monsoon indeed assigned you to be the official in charge. However, your officiating, Mr. Perfect, according to President Monsoon, will be conducted outside of the ring. And World Wrestling Federation official Earl Hebner will officiate inside the ring. Well, there's nothing wrong with having two referees, that's for certain. Well, why don't they put the other referee outside the ring? And let Mr. Perfect stay inside. I'm not so sure. With a double cross, uh, They said Mr. Perfect was in charge. We saw what happened to Earl Hebner last time. He got knocked flying right out in the ring. Well, that wasn't Earl Hebner's fault. And Earl Hebner has a heck of a lot more experience in the ring than does Mr. Yeah! Perfect. The this last is... time Mr. Perfect refereed, remember WrestleMania 10? I do. He didn't do such a great job. This is typical garbage for the click. It's bias, it's favoritism, and it's not right. Shawn Michaels is always getting everything that he wants, and it's not fair. On the contrary, you talk about the deck being stacked against you. Give me a break. You're out here doing commentary. So you got Jim Cornette outside. You got Diana as a distraction. And the Bulldog on the inside. And Mr. Perfect on the inside. Now at least he's on the outside. What about that dirty old Mexican, Jose Estrada, uh, stop sitting there his nose? What's he doing out here? It's Jose Estrada. Yeah. Come on. And look, if the Bulldog is a better man, the officiating will have no bearing. Look, and we already know he's a better man. He beat Shawn Michaels once. This is just the second time to prove he really is better. And now you have to wonder, is this a distraction for the Bulldog? Or is it even a distraction for Shawn Michaels? I don't know. It's a ripoff for the Bulldog. And wait a minute, why is it a ripoff? If Mr. Perfect was going to be impartial, then why is it a ripoff? Right. Well, psychologically, maybe he was counting on having a bigger referee. And the Bulldog. Yeah, One take of his that. Fans and we that. ask, ladies and gentlemen, yes, the Union Jack, and we are live in the United Kingdom. These people are very rude. They ought to show a little respect for a man's country and his man's flag. Way after midnight in the United Kingdom, and unquestionably, our fans in Europe staying up late, ladies and gentlemen. They do not want to miss a moment of this. Believe me, it's well worth staying up because they are going to see a partisan crowd over. here on hand in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Can you hear that? They're saying UK, UK, UK. Well, at one time, unquestionably, Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, someone the United Kingdom, and indeed everyone was very, very proud of. But uh, under the, uh, the hand of Jim Cornette, his popularity has waned some. All right, here we go. Again, the Bulldog asserting himself in the power department. There's no question about that. Michaels will give it to him every time. That may be the key to the matchup. The Bulldog Look has great agility, great coordination, but you can't forget his power. Arguably the strongest man in the World Wrestling Federation is Davey Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Shawn Michaels cannot win a power match. Shawn Michaels must win a wrestling match that is wrestled with a fast pace. Michaels locking up with the British Bulldog. Michaels. Again, shoved down to the canvas, and again, the assertion. Uh oh, oh, wait a minute. And Michaels with that temper. Everybody knows he has it. And Bulldog could attempt to take advantage of that, obviously, all the way through the matchup. Bulldog with great upper body strength and a collar and elbow position when both men are vertical. The Bulldog's going to have the advantage. Sean's got to get the Bulldog down, take him down, or make him really work hard and quicken the pace, like a fast breaking basketball team. You know what I'm worried about is we all know Shawn Michaels is a gutless coward. Oh, stop it. We don't I'm know anything like that I'm worried that he's going to try because you said he's got a bad temper. He might just punch the referee and get a disqualification oh, to keep his title. 
I'm wondering why Cornette and Perfect were having such a conversation over there a They're few moments talking. ago. You know what? I think Mr. Perfect told Cornette well, to stay out. Kick out. And, uh, oh, wait a minute. That scissor kick out by Michaels, and Michaels the quicker the two, and nice kick out by Michaels. And a head center, kick out Michaels, right back up, Bulldog right back down. Oh, look at that. And this time, Michaels applied more pressure and didn't get his head back. Side headlock takeover. Shawn Michaels using two turns we'll talk a lot about in this match. Leverage and quickness. Two keys to Shawn Michaels' success because, as we said, Shawn cannot overpower the Bulldog. But for that matter, who can? But by the same token, leverage and speed, the British Bulldog has both of those attributes, so he's got more than Shawn Michaels has to offer. He's stronger, he's more experienced, he's a better wrestler. Five, two, and none. You're not gonna pin Michaels that way. He has to release the whole deal well. And he's got a lot better manager. And wait a minute, this Lousy time Bulldog had the, the leg hooked quite well. Nonetheless, let's face it, notwithstanding the individual attributes of both individuals, this may simply come down to luck. Whoever has Lady Luck riding on her shoulders could be, but champion after this is over. Nice takedown again by Michael. Turn! Bulldog better watch you know, you, himself. You talk about Lady Luck, what about Gorilla Monsoon, Mr. Favoritism? That's what it might come down to, giving some biased decision to Shawn Michaels in that lousy click. Now, wait a minute. Again, if Mr. Perfect was going to be the impartial referee you said he was going to be, then, then why are you upset? I'm not upset at all. I'm just stating a fact that it's not fair. Off the rope, and uh oh, Michaels now. Look at him bounce off the British Bulldog. Underneath the Bulldog, nice leap frog, and this time Michaels over the top. Michaels, no. Michaels hanging right on. Look at that. Oh, Super oh, What a maneuver by Shawn Michaels. Michaels comes out. No. Oh. Bulldog, look out. Oh, no. Oh. Unbelievable. I Shawn can't believe Michaels. It. And Cornette gets rid of Joe. There we go. Oh, yeah. Pete Sampras has nothing on Shawn Michaels. And what a target Cornette posterior was. He's got no business touching my manager. And Cornette got a hot seat. And Shawn Michaels really bringing this capacity crowd alive. Here we go. Let's take another look at this extraordinary maneuver now. Look at that. Head scissors over the top by Shawn Michaels. And take a look. Well, how are we going to see that? We're going to see a forearm in a moment. There's a look on Diana's face. And she's really concerned. Hey, God, she should be. She is beautiful. She's worried, but very, very beautiful. She is a beautiful like woman. Most of the people in my family is a couple ugly. One of my brothers is real ugly. Owen, were you adopted? Stop it. What kind of a stupid question is that? Are you implying that I'm much smarter than everybody else and better looking? Obviously, the brother you're making reference to is the individual whom you've attempted to disparage all these many years. Brett, the hitman heart, who no doubt is watching from Calgary on pay-per-view. I think he was adopted. Nobody wanted him. My mom had com compassion. Oh, come on. We don't need to go there. Thank you. It's true. This is a very sound maneuver by the British Bulldog. I know it's elementary. I know it's basic. But that side headlock is a punishing maneuver. It wears you down. And with the great power of the Bulldog, it keeps Shawn Michaels grounded and lets the Bulldog use his greatest asset, his strength. I think you're going to see a very technical wrestling match, unlike some of the other boats that we've seen.